money is merely a byproduct. So if it becomes our main objective, I want more money, well, then we have to ask, well, what is money? Mm -hmm. It's a representation of value. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you get more money to actually deliver more value? So the question is, what activities are most consistent with who you are to deliver the most value to the world? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't take money to make money. It takes value creation to make money. Money can be complicated. Let a nerd help you. We're here to demystify the complex nature of money by getting you answers from financial nerds and whiz kids. Welcome to Ask the Money Nerds, a weekly segment of the Wealth Labs podcast where we answer your most pressing money questions. What is money? Why is it so confusing or elusive for so many people? And what myths do people hold on to? You know, and they hold back from living a great life and winning this game of money. I mean, is it about scrimping and saving? Or is it about risking and investing? Or maybe neither. So what's the best way? It's really about removing certain blocks so you can gain peace of mind, financial clarity, and break through your limitations around money being complex, evil, or, you know, for that matter, just about luck. A lot of people kind of feel that way, right? So, yeah. Stolba, this is kind of your deal here today. I mean, I've got things oh, to is. cover, but yeah. but I know you really, this is your deal that you want to talk about. Yeah, I was thinking since we were in the, we're in the start of a new year, people are thinking about, you know, I think one thing that I love about the new year, I'm not big into making re resolutions, but I love the collective energy around people considering what's possible for their lives. Like, how can we make you know, the world a better place? How can I improve as an individual? How can I invest in my family? And just thinking on this like growth trajectory. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of an exciting time. So my thought is we could talk about ways to win with money or to be, and another way to put it is how can we be in a better relationship or right relationship with money? And so I came up with my top three things um, that I think is, um, would be good to spend time considering um, to help us get in right relationship. So yeah, well, that's and what I, I was thinking of today. Let, let's start with your top three and then I'll chime in with some ideas I have around this uh -huh. because a lot of people think about money as like spreadsheets and numbers. Yes. But I think sure. of money as like a concept mm -hmm. and that can simplify things when we look at it as a concept. Yeah. When I was on the drive in this morning, you know, it's a good, a good hour plus. Yeah, with so some snow. I always have some time to think. I was thinking about what is a word that describes money for me? I think before I use the word tool, you know, it's a tool to help me build the life right. that I love. But the, I think the better word for me these days is money is my teammate my teammate for creating the life that I want to live to invest in the world that I believe that future generation should be a part of. And so I love, I want more teammates. I like <laughs> you know? that because <laughs> it's your income is someone yeah. else's expense mm -hmm. and your expenses are someone else's income. Yeah. Right. What, which means you get to utilize their skills. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's really efficient because they can do something that maybe you're not as versed in or that you don't want to do, but they somehow enjoy it, hopefully, mm -hmm. ideally, or they have expertise in that. And so that gives you time to focus on what you want to bring to the world. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's an important understanding around money, income and expense. Yes. Because like, most people just think, oh, got to get rid of expenses. Mm -hmm. Expenses are bad, but expenses are the only way we utilize our money. Right. So th I don't mm -hmm. see them as bad. And I think there's different types of expenses. There's mm -hmm. productive ones and there's destructive ones, right? Most definitely. Like if we're just paying for something that we never utilize, that's probably destructive. If we borrow and don't have the money and we consume and we don't have anything to show for it, mm -hmm. that's pretty destructive. But if we invest in ourselves or we mm -hmm. put money in and more than that amount of money comes out, that's investments, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good example of this, especially around this time of year when we're starting a new year is so many people want to get their health back on track, right? So gym memberships, you know, skyrocket around this time, you know, that would be a productive expense. If you're utilizing it. it, you go to the gym, you're developing new rhythms around your health, but if you're paying for it and not going, yeah. and that would likely be a destructive expense because it's not helping you, um, meet the goal that you have for your life. So, right. So teammate, I like that good teammate. perspective. That's my, that's my word. And I was also thinking you've said this in, um, other videos and in your teachings and things like that, but even some of the language we use around money, like I just spent $50. Well, it's more like you said earlier, I'm, when you think of spent, it's like gone. 
right? It's more of an exchange. I just traded my money for something or I'm, I was trying to think about other words on that, but I just, I'm not a big fan of like, I spent my money, even mm -hmm. though it's like a simple word and we all use it, but it just kind of means that it's done. And I don't believe that money's done once it's spent. Because right, it, it gets it, circulated. It gets circulated. And right. you, yeah, so I've just been pondering that a little more. So my first one on my top three is get acquainted with the roots of your relationship with money. I believe this in all areas of my life and especially around money. Like we have to know our story and how it was developed around our beliefs here. And um, just thinking about, I have a few questions. So just thinking about like, what thoughts do you have about money? Like what's just ruminating in your mind? Um, do you think that there's not enough? Do you think the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? You know, money doesn't come to me, I work hard, but you know, just think of the tapes that are going around in your mind. Um, and it could be in the middle of a work day, it could be on a drive, but start paying attention to how you engage in your mind with money. Um, but also how do you talk about money? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's an important thing to consider. And especially looking at what experiences did you have growing up around money? You know, how did you hear your parents talking about money? How did you see your parents interact with money? And I mean, I could give some specific examples, but I think for me growing up in just kind of a middle class working family, my parents worked super hard, kind of blue collar family, and we always had what we needed, but there was still this underlying theme of stress around money. Like there's not enough of it and we work really hard, but we still don't have what we need or we want. And so in my journey of being becoming um, just more um, in tune with my thoughts around money. I've, I've had to look at those things and right. say, what was fed to me and what did I just naturally pick up on as a child, as a teenager that is no longer serving me and it's not going to get me to where I wanna be with money and it's not serving me right now with money. Mm -hmm. And so thinking through those three things, how do I think about money? How do I talk about money? How do my friends around me talk about money? Um, I think it's also important and then identifying and moving past the experiences that you had in your younger years. Yeah, I think that there's a notion that I can't afford it is a statement that people can say. And it's like, hey, if I say that, don't push me mm -hmm. and I won't push you. Yeah. So it's a social agreement. Mm -hmm. I can't afford it. I like just the simplicity of saying, what would it take to afford that? Yeah. How can I afford How it? How could I afford that? Mm -hmm. How can I afford that? What value would I have to create? Mm -hmm. I see money as a byproduct of value. Yeah. I see value creation about serving others and solving problems. Mm -hmm. And I see vision being the main catalyst to value creation, what you're doing and why you're doing it and the container in which you operate. Mm -hmm. Some people operate in the time for money container. Other people operate in the scrimping, saving, sacrificing, deferring and delaying container, mm -hmm. right? So it's all reduction based. Yeah. Other people live in the, I'll just work harder container. Right. Other people are like, I just need to get luckier and do more investment deals container. So we have different containers that people operate in based upon their beliefs. And it feels like each container judges the other one. Right. Mm -hmm. You've got misers that are all about what they could do to eliminate expenses and costs and, and, and just keep as much money as possible. Yeah. You've got fiscally conservative people that are all about funding retirement plans and focus heavily on the intelligence they have around money. But typically, you know, they're going to be mindful about how they save it, but then they're going to invest it in ways that sometimes are kind of reckless in the, in mutual funds. You got strivers, which I've been a striver more than any thing is like, I'll just work harder. I can just make more by working harder, but then they run themselves ragged and get exhausted. And then you got these high rollers that are always addicted to the next deal. They're always talking about the next big thing. They're trying to get rich quick and they're trying to cut corners and they're trying to make it big. You know, it's almost like a lottery winner syndrome, but within business and startups. Yeah. So, Understanding that like money is merely a byproduct. So if it becomes our main objective, I want more money. Well, then we have to ask, well, what is money? Mm -hmm. It's a representation of value. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you get more money to actually deliver more value? Now, some people are like, well, I can inherit money. If I guess if you're part of the lucky sperm club, <laughs> other people might be like, I'll marry into money, but that's probably a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some people could just be lucky, right? They buy the right stock. They bought the right cryptocurrency. They, mm -hmm they you know won the lottery those are a lot of times hard to sustain mm -hmm. so the question is what activities are most consistent with who you are to deliver the most value to the world mm -hmm. because it doesn't take money to make money it takes value creation to make money uh -huh. 
And when we get confused about that and think money is something we got to get or take or compete for or hold on to or, you know, or, or get hold on be before someone else gets it or take it because someone else will. And it's a zero sum game where it's win lose scenarios. That's exhausting that tug of war. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of times there's, it's bred by jealousy and scarcity. And so look, I've been there. I've been like, I almost bought Bitcoin at a hundred, didn't, and then <laughs> started regretting it and it infiltrated my dreams. It infiltrated my life. It was hard to just relax and be at peace. Mm -hmm. And I had, it took work, right? And be like, well, look, that would have been luck. I didn't really know enough about it. It was too hard to transact at the time. So I just gave up on it too quickly. But, you know, like it, instead the view would be like, well, what is my life gonna be about? Like I wanna plant a seed of hope, connection and expression in the hearts of 1 billion people, right? That's, so if it's aligned with that vision, I'm in, mm -hmm. it's not aligned, I'm out. Yeah. And so I'm focusing on value creation as the main culprit to finance, mm -hmm. not luck, not, you know, um, marrying into it or inheriting <laughs> it or anything like that. It's like, what can I do in the world mm -hmm. and have money be the byproduct of that? Yeah. So vision is how you win, right? Value is how you deliver that vision. Mm -hmm. And then you know, what you're gonna have is dollars as a byproduct of that. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take money to make money takes relationships and ideas. It takes value and exchange. It takes serving others and solving problems. It takes value creation at the core of it. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone? Um, I agree with what you're saying. I, um, what would you say to someone who is, you know, a teacher or a stay at home mom or someone who is working in the humanities, let's just say like, I feel like those mm -hmm. people are delivering, delivering massive amounts of value, right. but money's not following them. The container is the constraint. Mm -hmm. The container is the constraint. Yeah. You know, my, my little sister, um, great teacher, created a blog, mm -hmm. what the teacher really wants, started doing really well with the blog, helping teachers. So she was educating teachers and an educator herself. What she's getting paid by the government was not great. What she started doing as an enterprise, as an entrepreneur with that blog started to increase her income. Mm -hmm. So, the container win really matters. And sometimes the procedures and the structure are going to limit how much you can get paid because it limits the number of people you can reach. Mm -hmm. Or it might even limit how deeply you can impact those people. You were a teacher, yes. you know, let's say yeah. you have 30 students, you know, and we look at the tax base of 30 students and how much would come in that would go to the actual physical structure, how much would go to the actual administration, how much goes to mm -hmm. books and supplies, and then how much is left over for a teacher. And we say, well, it's unfair that they're not paid more, but the question is where would that money come from? Mm -hmm. Right? So the container might be to be an educator, you might have to create a new construct. You might have to do something different because I consider myself an educator, much mm -hmm. higher paid than the teachers that are, you know, working for the government yeah. in my family. And we've had, my sister was teacher of the year. My mother-in-law was teacher of the year. Um, mm -hmm. My wife's aunt was teacher of the year, like some phenomenal teachers. But the reality is it's how much um, value can they provide in that, in that mm -hmm. construct? Yeah. So asking the question, how do I expand my container so right. I can increase my value? Not my value, but right. And the vision is the container. Yes. It tells our okay. brains what's important, That's what to pay attention to. And, and really the impact equation is how do I A, reach more people mm -hmm. or B, more deeply impact the people I reach. Mm -hmm. And if you can just solve those things, there's new value. Now, if you're going to be a domestic engineer, right, and stay at home, you'll get value from the hugs, the kisses, the t you know, and not always pleasant in raising kids, but right. you'll get the value in the emotion, not in the dollar. Yeah. Because there's different currency. Mm -hmm. Healthy there's attachment with of, your kids right. is a healthy, you know. Right. So, so you're making a very long-term investment. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe they become your retirement plan. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. But, but that's a, that's a choice. Like yeah. you might have a family member that is mm -hmm. so amazing to your family, never get wealthy financially but it's mm -hmm. because they dedicated the life to the family, not to people they didn't know. Yeah. When you don't know people, they exchange money with you. When you know them, they exchange conversations, pleasantries, time, you know, those mm -hmm. uh, connection. So that's, that's the, that's the reality of the world. Mm -hmm. So just because you add a lot of value doesn't automatically mean you're going to be really rich. It's how do you add that value and who do you add that value to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what does the public's perception of the value look like? Cause value is perspective. And it's yeah. a perspective of the person that's paying for it. Mm -hmm. And so that container is what we're back in. Yeah. What's the container, mm -hmm. you know, and we're constantly looking at what's our container 
and how are we going to reach people and how do we impact them and what does that look like and you know we're, we're inventing brand new ways and that's just part of the process and that's not always an easy process but it can be very rewarding mm -hmm. right sure. and it may not be short-term immediate i think a lot of times we have expediency where we where we cut corners to get to activity that directly compensates versus vision, which indirectly creates the container that mm -hmm. compensates the bigger dollars. And mm -hmm. because people get into places where they're in student loan debt, or they get a car loan, or they get credit cards, or they get married, and all of a sudden they've got a mortgage, and now they're kind of forced into a situation where I've gotta pay my bills, I don't have time to think anymore, I just have to do and life feels super busy. And when we're doing things that we hate and draining our energy, then we don't have time for the things we love, which was the reason we started doing it in the first place. And hence you start seeing breakage in families with divorce and bitterness that people have because the stock market's not performing or because they're working really hard, but they don't feel rewarded for it, but they're working in a way that's not consistent with the best value they can provide the world. And I'm not saying this is easy. No, It's, it's not work. easy to find what that's going to be. It may exist, it may not. When it doesn't exist, that's a, that could be a scary place, mm -hmm. right? Be like, I'm going to invent something. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. A new format that could take time. But the question is what work is worthy of your life? Mm -hmm. And if you decide to be a teacher for the government, you made an exchange that said, this is what you get paid. Yeah. And if you want to get paid more than that, you've got to create a new container. Mm -hmm. You've got to complement that container. There's maybe additional work that you have to do. I don't know what that is, but, but you really have to question is that where you want to be? Because if you stay in it and complain, you're destroying the enjoyment of the work and you're demeaning mm -hmm. the system and you're part of the problem because you're actually allowing the system to underpay Perfect. you if that's how you feel. Yes. And then unfortunately our kids start to see that. Our kids start Definitely. being trained by people that go, I'm underpaid. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, well, what, why? Yeah. Because, you know, because these rich people aren't paying more. Mm -hmm. Oh, screw those rich people. You know, and you see where those right. those beliefs come because when my wife was a teacher and we would be with the grocery store and she'd see a student, she was like a hero. It was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, oh, that's it's one of the best Mrs. Feelings. Gunderson. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't believe it. And I was uh -huh. like, I've never been approached with that kind of excitement <laughs> as our students and enthusiasm. Yes. And so think of the influence that teacher is going to have. Mm -hmm. And so we have to look at the systems and we have to look at what our choices with time and we have to look at mm -hmm. the additional currencies. Is it simply the value we provide and the smiles that we provide? Mm -hmm. Is it the connection we have with the person? I mean, there's, there's a number of things that we can kind of look at there, mm -hmm. but if you don't like the system, you got to create a new one. Yes. And maybe yeah. you got to partner with that. someone to create it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really good insight. I had a student reach out, um, several months back and just said, Ms. Stolpa, do you remember when you taught us about healthy living and da, 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 da. And you taught us all these things. And I just wanted, you to know, I really appreciated that. And I was like, that just like warmed my heart for months. Right. It was just That's so beautiful. part of your compensation. Yes, right? absolutely. It's part of the compensation. Absolutely. It may not be monetary compensation all the time, mm -hmm. but there is value, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Always value. All okay. Right. So top one, get acquainted with the roots of your relationship with your money. And then you would add, consider your vision, your right. container, um, and how you add value to the world there. Right. And I think Killing Sacred Cows is a great book for this. So I'm just going to gift it wealthfactory.com forward slash mega kit, M-E-G-A-K-I-T. There's mm -hmm. other resources, but Killing Sacred Cows addresses nine money myths that have really permeated people's mindset and limited their prosperity. Mm -hmm. So by identifying them, you can actually choose a different path Yes, and, and you can invent your future more powerfully versus just taking what's the limited belief system that's been handed down for mm -hmm. generations that maybe served us during the great depression, but maybe doesn't still uh, pertain a hundred years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, I'm not saying this because I work for you because I read the book before I worked for you, but that is, it's a fantastic book. I r remember like breezing through that book, not breezing. Like I just flew through that book because mm -hmm. it's helps you understand these complex um, myths in a d digestible way. And you're just like, Phew. What <laughs> have I been believing my whole life? What have I been taught? So I would encourage everybody to get that. Awesome. All right. Turn your thoughts into profits and build the life you love. Want to master your money? Want to figure out the things that you could do to improve your finances? Click here and check out more videos like this on Money Matters.